Phase 3 of Season of Discovery is here, let's see how we can hit the ground running as a combat rogue, starting with the stat Pryo. So, our number one stat priority is Agility. This is really good for rogues for two reasons. One, it gives us attack power. Two, it also increases our crit chance. That then is why the second stat is attack power on its own, which obviously increases our damage with our auto attacks and abilities. Then it's going to be crit chance on its own. You see now why agility is so good as number one, because it's two of them together technically. Then we're going to go with strength, and then we're going to go with our hit chance, getting that to 6%, because the sunken temple bosses are two levels above us, and that equals 6% hit cap. Of course, we are going to be a combat rogue, so we're putting most of our points into the combat tree. Starting off with 5 out of 5 into lightning reflexes, increasing our dodge chance by 5%. We're going to go down one and put 5 out of 5 into precision, increasing our chance to hit with melee weapons by 5%, therefore only needing an extra 1% to hit that 6% cap. Woo-hoo! We're going to put 3 out of 3 into improved backstab, increasing the critical strike chance of backstab by 30%, which is massive. 2 out of 2 into endurance, giving us a bit more utility, reducing the cooldown of sprint and evasion by 1.5 minutes, and also 2 out of 2 into improved sprint, giving a 100% chance to remove all movement impairing effects when you do activate your sprint ability. This is a really good utility, meaning we can zoom around a lot faster and easier. Going down from then, 5 out of 5 into dual wield. We will be dual wielding, and you are also even if you go into assassination in phase 3. Increasing the damage by our offhand weapon by 50%. 5 out of 5 again into daggers, increasing our crit chance with daggers by 5%. Taking us down to the third, but to least to last row. We're going to put one out of one into Blade Flurry. It's two minute cooldown, increasing our attack speed by 20%. In addition, attacks strike an additional nearby opponent. This is really good for AoE. And of course, the attack speed is not to be scoffed at. For the remaining few points, we're going to put two out of two into Weapon Expertise, increasing our skill with Sword Fist and Dagger Weapons by five, and then one out of one into Adrenaline Rush. Again, another cooldown on a five minute cooldown, increasing our energy regenerate by 100% for 15 seconds. Going into subtlety, we're going to put 5 out of 5 into opportunity, increasing the damage dealt from behind, specifically on our backstab Garrett and ambush ability. This will be really important on the backstab ability specifically, more on that when we go through the runes. We're now at level 45, we've got 5 more, I'm going to put these into malice, increasing our total crit chance with everything by a further 5%. So, what rooms are we going to take with this build? Well, on the hands, we're going to go with Mutilate, instantly attacking with both weapons, dealing damage, and it is increased by 20% against poisoned targets. More on that shortly. Awards two combo points. Also, Mutilate is actually going to benefit from anything that affects backstab. So, opportunity and improved backstab. Remember the increased crit chance of backstab by 30%, increasing damage dealt when behind from backstab. So that's all going to affect Mutilate as well, which is going to be our main combo point generator. On the pants then, it's going to be in Venom. Finishing move, so Mutilate's our combo point gen, and Venom is our finishing move, dealing instant poison damage based on your deadly poison dose on your target. Following the Envenom attack, you have a 75% increased frequency of applying instant poison for one second plus an additional one sec per combo point. One dose is activated per combo point. If that sounds confusing, don't worry. It's all pretty much passive. Basically, it's a finishing move that's going to do poison damage based on your poisons and inflict your poisons. Now, on the next one, the chest rune, Deadly Brew, this is actually going to make it so that when you inflict any other poison on a target, you inflict deadly poison. So when you get that instant poison on there from Envenom, you're actually going to also inflict deadly poison, which is going to do damage, you know, with your deadly, um, with your Envenom, sorry. If your weapon doesn't have a poison applied, it'll have the chance to trigger instant poison. So you're already going to get instant poison getting applied anyway. And deadly poison and instant poison now gain increased damage from your attack power, making them even more powerful. So you can see there where the three abilities are actually all coming into each other in a symbiotic relationship. On the waste rune, we're going with Shadow Step. Attempt to step through the shadows and reappear behind your target. Again, we're doing more damage from behind our target with Backstab, remember? So going behind the target and increasing our movement speed is going to help us do more damage. On the feet, it's going to be Master of Subtlety. Attacks made while stealthed and for 6 seconds after breaking stealth cause an additional 10% damage. We can use Vanish to get back into stealth as well. Um, well, to be able to get Master of Subtlety buff. We want to use this whenever we can, of course, like at the start of uh, the fight, going into it with stealth. On the head rune then, which is the new one, 
We're going with combat potency. You've got a 20% chance to gain 15 energy every time you deal damage with your offhand weapon. Again, that's going to increase the cycle between generating combo points and your finishers, speeding up that cycle, making it faster and more fun, and therefore doing more damage. And lastly, on the wrist rune, we're doing cut to the chase. Again, this is a really interesting one that makes the rotation a bit simpler and kind of gets rid of that hassle of having to keep reapplying your slice and dice. So you're eviscerating envenom abilities, refresh either your slice and dice or blade dance duration to its five combo point maximum. If both are active, only the one with the shortest remaining duration will be refreshed. So, how does that all come together and look like in the rotation then? So, when we go into combat, we do want to go into stealth, because remember, we're going to be doing more damage with the Masterly, Master of Subtlety rune. And don't forget to be behind your targets if you can. We're going to Garrett when we go in from stealth, and then we're going to Mutilate to increase our combo point generation. Get your Adrenaline Rush out to generate combo points even quicker, and then pair that with Blade Flurry if you can, increasing your attack speed, maximizing cleave damage, of course, because that's going to hit another target with your Blade Flurry as well. Rather than one, it'll be two. If you get a second chance of Adrenaline, use Vanish with it. That is going to reactivate your Master of Subtlety buff from Stealth, so we can use those together again to maximize our damage on cooldowns. Cast Slice and Dice, once we've got five combo points, that's going to get that going, on your target and then keep refreshing it with the cut to the chase rune that we have which remember is our eviscerate and envenom abilities I'm gonna refresh <laughs> oh my god i nearly died maybe there's a rogan here um is gonna refresh our slice and dice on our target and of course as our finisher will be in venom if you're wondering what to do for aoe you can pretty much do the same thing you making use of your blade flurry to get cleave in there and then using your shuriken toss as your main aoe ability and that's it guys that's how you play combat rogue in phase three of sod if you did enjoy it then please feel free to leave a comment let me know what you think of the class or you know how it is in this phase and also feel free to join my discord where we have a really active community who are very friendly to both beginners and veterans alike of course and very helpful if you do have any questions you can also join my patreon if you would like some more behind the scenes stuff a blog posts on there and my lvi profile um i've got a compendium on wow with loads of info in it things like that and also the there's a Patreon-only Discord channel in the Discord as well where you can chat to me and other Patreon members in a slower manner than the other channels go. If you're looking for more SOD guides, check out the shelf here on my homepage. Current guides, I always keep this updated and whenever something is no longer relevant, it's taken out. So you know these are always the most current guides, including Phase 3 for SOD Season of Discovery. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in Phase 3.